Beautiful fish. Look at it. Well, I haven't measured him properly, but... He's got to be near 50, doesn't he, at yeah. least. We got two fish and two casts. <laughs> oh, toy jack. Tell me the story. The same, wait, we're fishing the same spot where Pete just got his. Next cast, just smashed me again. He is so red. <laughs> that whole set underneath at the bottom as well. And What a fish, in the tiniest water, you can barely see it on Google Maps, it's just a, a green line of trees when you zoom in, you can't see the water at all, and it just, it emphasises that point that you just got to go and explore and see the place and go and find new spots because this has got to be the best one I've had in a long, long time, you know? Welcome back to my little box. In today's video, I've got a real special treat for you. I'm going to introduce you to one of the most influential blokes in my fishing world who's had a huge impact on the way that I do things and uh, right back since the very start. In today's video, we're going to go through what sort of things you can do to help yourself be set up really well to travel, what to look for in uh, a tinny if you're purchasing a tinny and how to look after your tinny, what to look for if it starts to get a little bit worn and things just to prevent some of those real hiccups cups with your setup and I want to give you a little bit of a backstory I've just pulled up out the front so we're going to go in and he's going to be helping me this morning with my boat loading setup putting it all together but I'm going to try and quiz him on a few things in, in his area of expertise but the bloke I'm talking about he was a big theme behind the very first Jack Guide DVD that I did and the theme behind that DVD was find the adventure and find the fish and that's been Pete's influence just finding the adventure I talk about Pete's law, about getting owned as much as you can and get working as hard as you can and finding the most far off places that you can and that's Pete's law. So you followers that have been with me since the very start or have seen the Jack Guide DVD, you'll know about Pete's law and uh, that's who we're meeting today. Pete has been a massive inspiration for me over the years to find the adventure and to be set up well enough to do it. So I wanted to introduce you to him because he's been one of these blokes in the last couple of months especially who's helped support me to get on the road in the best way I can so that we can travel safely and, uh, d and basically live the dream, realize the dream of fishing around the country. So he's been setting up and doing things to my tinny so the kids are safe. That's what we're going to take a look at. So I'm going to take you through my boat today and there's been some big changes there. A lot of you probably haven't seen a video uh, on YouTube called The Tweed that Pete put together of he, he and I fishing years ago and uh, just smashing some big mangrove jack together. We had a beautiful morning out there together. Uh, but Pete is a mangrove jack tragic and he's also the bloke that got me on the jet ski offshore. So I've got a lot to blame him for. Uh, but anyway, that's a little bit of a background story. He's an avid fisherman and basically like hardcore adventurist with a lot of knowledge on how to do it well and how to be set up really well. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a background story. We've been great mates since we were teenagers and uh, it's all just sort of come to a head where he's been able to really help me in the last few weeks before we leave. So I'm going to put the camera down, um, get in there, have a chat to Pete and then try and quiz him around the boat on not, not what he's done to my boat. I want to show you that stuff, but also what sort of stuff he can share with you guys to help get you guys set up. All right, we'll get in there. <laughs> All right, I've just backed her in and we're ready to go. Pete's helping me with the loader today. But before we do that, I'll just take you outside and have a quick look at some of the work he's done for me. I want to show you what he's done for me over the years. But there's my boat trailer that has been uh, amazing for about, well, it must be nearly a decade now. This trailer Pete's built for me. And the whole concept was that I'd have the Hilux rims right the way through so that if I was away from everywhere and uh, I needed a spare or a second spare, I had him on the Hilux and he built me a rack system. I could put, a, put the boat on the roof in dire need. So there's a system that he's built for me and he built it so that it wasn't too high. Even though I had great big uh, 
tyres, it still sits low enough to be really easy at any ramp. Um, let me show you what else we've got and then I'll take you through my boat and show you the, the work that's been done on the boat. Have a look at the inside of this. So there's been a roll cage put in here. Pete did all of this work and this roll cage is absolutely bulletproof. And when he showed me, I was like, oh my God. And he was swinging off the edge of it and uh, I was laughing at how, how solid it was all put together. But the, the truth is it's meant that I can get both of my big feel free kayaks on the roof instead of having to tow a trailer. When we used to travel um, in teams of guys away, we'd have to take trailers for the kayaks. They've all gone on the roof and these have been the obnoxiously big racks that have been up on the roof of my Hilux for a long time now. Um, that's the way that people can find me on the road half the time when, they, when they're driving behind me, and that includes Pete last week. But so those are the, they're the racks that have been on there. It's all been changed now, and Pete's helping me assemble the boat loader system. But uh, what I wanna do is go through the boat and have a look at this. Here's the new wrap for the boat. So there's some branding on there, a beautiful big barra and a jack and you're going to be seeing a hell, hell of a lot of this boat in the months to come. But Pete has gone to town and I had a plan for this boat to be able to bring it around Australia and my wife wanted to know that she was going to be safe and the kids too. So we came up with some designs uh, that my wife was happy with and we've made it deeper in here and then uh, made some points around the uh, outside for the kids for railing. and. Pete's built this big box out where the kids can even stand in here and it's a storage area as well. So, Pete, thanks for your work, mate. It's been epic. No worries, mate. I'm glad. It's a bit weird to be on camera, but... Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Since the early days. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, I just, I wanna show you exactly what we've done and uh, take you around uh, the boat as, it's, as it sits now. But then I'm gonna get Pete to share some of his insights on what to look for in a boat if you're purchasing a boat and some of the things, because this boat is now getting on in age. I've had it for well over a decade now. It gets dipped in and out of the salt every week. Um, maybe he's got some tips for me and for you guys that can help get the best life out of your tinny uh, and know what to look for to keep it in good shape. So there's been transom, um, um, like strength and transom there to be able to hold my big prop over the years. This railing is a big part of the, the fix for me. The kids need a rail, so when we're bouncing along and driving through the creeks, the kids need something to hold on to. And I also wanted a splash guard here, which Pete's built in, because I've gone through Corrado's over the years from all the salt spray that comes over the edge of this little tinny. So, um, that's been something that I've wanted now for a while and with all the, the travel and everything we're going to be doing with the boat in the water, I think that's going to save some of my reels. So there's a splash guard up the front here as well and you can see that the railing is raised so that hopefully just a little bit better protection against the crops just putting their, their chin over and into the boat because it sits so low. So that's something that my wife was adamant about that we needed. Pete, can you talk us through some of this design here, mate? Yeah, so basically what Johnny came to me with was this whole section underneath here was just open but if you just sort of have a look in there at where the kids would be literally sort of putting their feet, just a mess. Yeah. And Johnny's gone through and stripped out just, you know, 10 years worth of 12 volt. Um, that was There's just all me hidden everywhere. Lures. All me lures are hidden down in there, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> So, so this, this little sort of storage box, you know, slash, you know, subfloor for the kids to stand in. Um, such a little basic design. When Johnny came to me before he was going to go away on the trip, um, we had sort of extensive plans to modify the boat, yeah. uh, gut it, retrofit it as we would normally do. Yeah. Um, but, a, but upon inspecting his boat uh, and methodically going over it, because it's just, it's taken a beating over the years. Um, it's done a lot of trips, mate. We went over it and, you know, it was it probably wasn't the boat that you would want to go and sort of spend a whole heap of money on. So, yeah. a lot of corrosion had set in, um, just from, you know, at the end of the day, just salt water use. Yeah. Um, whether, whether or not something gets washed out properly or not, very um, rarely gets washed out properly. Yeah. <laughs> and even if it does, there's yeah. still sort of like salt residue that pulls, you know, up underneath, you know, towards the bow of the boat, you know, um, 
where that sort of you know real sort of steep dead rise in the boat is just pulls in there so unless you've yeah. got the boat elevated and literally draining all the time yeah. aerated very very hard over a 10 15 20 year period to not have some form of salt affecting the inside of the hull yeah super, and that's what we common. found eh? that started to affect it i ended up having leaks pete so mm. um this is one thing that I thought we could talk to for you guys at home to um, get your head around some of the things that maybe you should look for in your aging tinny or to look for if you're purchasing a tinny to see if it has those signs of wear and what sort of repairs might be installed. So I think the biggest tip that I guess I could pass on to anybody looking to buy a secondhand boat is if you're not sure and you've never bought a secondhand boat, you need to make sure that somebody looks at that boat that knows what they're looking at or if you're just literally looking at it yourself, methodically get underneath that boat. Forget what the casting decks look like, forget what the internal fit out is like, okay? Get underneath that hull and have a really good look, okay? All along the chine, underneath here. Yep. This long weld, this factory weld. Yep. A lot of the time, you know, it's more up this section through towards the bow. They can let go through here, right. okay? So, two thirds the way up, from the transom to the bow, underneath, yep. underneath that, underneath that chine extrusion here. Okay, really get underneath and have a have a good look at that weld. And if you, what would be wrong if I was underneath there and I was looking at that? What would I spot? So probably you, all coming apart on mine. <laughs> it will physically, like you will literally be able to see, like this factory weld through here. Yep. Okay. And depending on whether it's a punt style boat or a runabout or a bigger boat, yep. the, the dead rise in the boat and how much it, you know, it's got the ability to displace, you know, energy when it hits a bit of chop or a wave or a wake or anything like that, it depends on where that force goes. So in a flatter bottom boat like Johnny's boat, a little punt, which is amazing for stability in creeks, these sections through here, they do cop a lot. So make sure that this weld all the way through to the transom is intact okay and that hasn't been repaired and if yeah. it has been repaired it needs to be repaired professionally yeah it's exactly the same um with the keel which is in the center of the boat yeah okay as the chine probably 80 to 90 percent of the time this is what we're repairing okay right. this factory weld up through here where the side sheet yeah right slots into this keel extrusion Okay, and then this factory weld runs the whole way down. 90% of the jobs that are fixed are on this keel. Same thing, can be up the front, can be in the middle, you know, it really depends on the style of the boat, okay, and, and where that energy gets dispersed. Yeah. So, you really need to pay attention along that whole keel line and have a really, really good look. If you're suspect on an area, um, it's very, very easy. You can literally just come underneath you can push your hand up where that weld is, put your knee into it, put anything into it, and try and sort of like, if you think you can see a crack, try and open that crack up with a bit of force, okay? And if you, if you can see that, well, you need to take that into consideration with what you're going to be planning on doing with the boat. Where are some other little points of inspection? You set it under this side here, and then yeah. down through the keel. Where else would so you go looking? On the bottom of the hull is probably the most important, okay? Because that's sort of where, you know, that's where the end of a boat's life really starts, okay? Yeah. Along that keel, okay? Both sides along that keel and along the chine. Other areas to look for, which are really sort of most of the time simple fixes. Where this gusset is here, a lot of the time it will start cracking through here. That's a really, really simple repair. Getting onto that early just saves you money in the long run. Less welding means cheaper repair, okay? And chances are less heat into that area means things become less brittle. So it will last a lot longer. Right, okay. So that's a really good one to look for because a lot of the a lot of the kids and the, the guys that follow my channel, Pete, are like estuary fishermen that have got a small tinny, like a little crabbing boat, similar to this sort of thing, and they're lure mm. fishing, and they're smashing their boat along, mm. doing, doing, doing. They might have a slightly oversized prop. Um, and so there is a bit more torque going through that section. That's a really good one. Yeah, and, and like I say, it's a, it's a relatively easy fix through that area. Um, you know, obviously any form of modifications, but raising raising transom heights and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you need to, you need to, you need to cross that bridge if you are buying a secondhand boat. It's yeah. probably one of the other most common things that if you're new to the boating game, right, 
in a small tinny, tinnies are made for either a long shaft motor or a short shaft motor. Okay, so the, the general dimensions, if you, want to me if you want to measure it or someone's not sure, from the actual bottom of the keel, okay, this point here, yep. roughly, right, so you can see Johnny's has been raised, you know, 25, 30 mil, whatever it is, to the top of the transom where the motor sits. Short shaft dimension is about 425 mil, yep. okay? Long shaft is 100 mil longer, so once again, bottom of the keel to where the motor sits, okay, yep. uh, is 525. So someone buys a tinny, and then they go and get their motor, they, it's worth measuring that to know that if you've bought a tinny that needs a long shaft. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's normally the other way around where someone has a boat, okay, and they're not sure because they're, they're wanting to upgrade a motor. They yeah. might want to go from a 15 to a 30, yeah. okay, and they're like, all of a sudden, they're looking at buying a used motor and, you know, someone's advertising it as a 25 horsepower short shaft. And if you're none the wiser, you, you think, well, I have no idea what I have. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully that's been uh, a real help for you in getting your head around, you know, the kinds of things that I've had to do. And, um, yeah, Pete's been really, really helpful for me. It's been a, a long journey of this boat. And when I brought it in the other day and I was like, um, Pete, we're going on a big trip and I want the kids to be safe. I want to, um, you know, maybe change everything. We had a, had a good look at it and Pete was like, Johnny, I don't think that this is the boat to do that with, given the age of the boat. Um, and you know what you really can get out of it and what you want to do with it let's have a look at things and as always his, um, his understanding and being able to help me get it right I'm really happy with it now so uh, what he's managed to do is he's repaired the holes in the bottom he's put the railing on the outside for the kids he's made it deeper in here so we've got storage and a spot for the kids where they can get a little bit more safe and down he's fixed the transom up and um, that's basically it. So I'm, I feel like it's ready to roll. The boat looks fantastic now. And uh, despite its age, it's coming for a trip around the country with us. To go and chase some barrow mangrove jacks on the ultimate fishing trip around the country. All that stuff is coming in the next few weeks as we head off. The loading system is happening. Pete's been helping me with that today and yesterday so that's all about to take place and uh, the adventure continues so it's really been a uh, well it's been well over a decade now of doing this stuff and like I said at the start of the video Pete's uh, influence to find the adventure and find the fish has had a huge impact on my fishing and uh, boy we've had some great adventures together so hopefully you've got some value out of this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and if there's things that you've picked up on, on uh, you know, looking after your tinny or what to look for when you're buying a second-hand tinny or even a new tinny. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So put some stuff in the comments. I'd love to read those and I'll get back to you as I can. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.